Hi guys. So this is where you're going to turn on your subtitles for the video. And if you want to join my membership, you can get free access to all my PDFs. And I also like to show you just a few examples of what I sell in my merch shop. I appreciate your support and back to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing Santa Claus. So the colors that I used is this sparkly, it's got some gold little flecks in it. It's just a red heart black sparkle. You can buy it at Walmart. I think big balls, I think. Michaels. Actually, no, Michaels, I don't think you can. And then this is just a Craft Smart White. This here is um, a red heart. It's Cardinal Red. That's the color of it. The yellow that I use for the belt. It's kind of a goldish color to it and I believe it's saffron. I believe that's the color. This is <clears throat> fur that I got but we'll get to that. I'll, I'll talk about this later when we get up to this area of what I used and show you the roll and everything else. So let's jump right into this. So I am using a 4.5 um, most of my yarn calls for a 5 to a 5.5, so of course this is being built in amigurumi, so we're going to go down in hook size. I'm just going to turn my light up a bit, because I, I am working with dark, uh, uh, dark, I'm working with black, a dark color right now, so turn my light up a bit so you can see what's going on. So we start with the boot. We're going to make the leg first, so this is the leg. We're going to make... <clears throat> the legs first so I'll build in one piece then we crochet the legs together and then later up we're going to crochet the arms on so it's all going to be one piece but if you've never done this before don't let it freak you out I'll walk you through it so first we're going to start by chaining nine and getting whole We have eight working stitches. The ninth one is the one on our hook still. I want you to do seven single crochets back up, leaving the last one unworked for now. So seven single crochets. In this last stitch, I want you to put six single crochets, and you're going to notice it kind of curve around, and I want you to follow that curve. So six single crochets. Sorry, my allergies are acting up in case I sound nasally. <laughs> So it curves around, so just follow the curve, turn it sideways, and pull my slip knot closed again, so right next to this slip knot. That's my slip knot. We're going to get right into that stitch, and we're going to do seven single crochets all the way back up. So now you're working on the bottom part of the chain that you first made. So your seventh stitch takes you right up to the very tippy top. We're going to use a marker just so you can kind of play along with me. So I weaved this guy in a little bit, so I'm just going to snip him off. If you haven't weaved him in, then I wouldn't snip him off. So let's get a marker so that you can make sure you're playing along with me go into our first stitch. So this is an elongated stitch. So when you go into your next stitch, you just have to be careful that this isn't, this is the same stitch. You have to actually pop over here. 
So what we're going to do is one single crochet increase three times. So this is our first stitch. Don't go into the same space. This is elongated. So pop over here and do your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And do that two more times. One single crochet, two single crochets. One more time, one single crochet, two single crochets in the same space. And now I want you to do two half doubles. The top four stitches, you're going to put two double, two half, sorry, two half double crochets in each of those. Now working our way back down the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do two half doubles. And then you're going to do a one single crochet increase three times, just like we did on the other side. So one single crochet, two single crochets. Two more times. And this is what you should have. So, I can get my computer to work. Your next round starts off with four single crochets. So that's number one. That's four single crochets. And then I want you to do four half doubles. And now I want you to do two double crochet increase two times. Double crochets. That's one. That's two double crochets. And then your increase is two double crochets in the same space. That's one time. Do it one more time. Now these top four stitches, I want you to put two double crochets, uh, sorry, top three stitches, I want you to put two double crochets in each of those next three stitches. Your next stitch is going to get two double crochets in the same space. And then you're going to do two double crochets, so one in the next, each of the next two stitches. The next stitch gets two double crochets in the same space. And then I want you to do two double crochets. Now I want you to do four half doubles. And then three singles. So that's the start of your boot. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet 
in each stitch around, you should have 37 stitches. So you can flip this around, be easier. So your next round, I want you to do 14 single crochets to start it. So that's number one. Make sure you count that as number one. This is my 14th stitch. From here I want you to do two single crochet decrease three times. That's two single crochets and then your decrease. I'm going to do invisible so in the front loops I pop around in the next front loop, yarn over, finish the stitch two more times. And then one single crochet back to your marker. You should have 34 stitches. So your next round is going to be 13 single crochets. That's number one. This is my 13th stitch and now I want you to do two single crochet decrease three times again. And then nine single crochets back to your marker. You should have 30 stitches at this point. And that's what it looks like, your little booty. next round is going to be 12 single crochets to start. That's number one.
This is my 12th stitch. I'm going to do two single crochet decrease three times again. seven single crochets back to your marker. You should have 28 stitches. A couple more rows. I want you to do 11 single crochets to start. That's my 11 single crochets. And now I want you to do two single crochet decrease just once. So you should be up on top of this toe area. I want you to do SC3, it's hard to hold, SC3 tog. So go into three stitches and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three so it's like a two tog but with three stitches and then you're going to do two single crochet decrease one time and then six single crochets back to your marker So you should have 24 stitches. So for your next round we're going to start with a decrease because our thing has moved over here and I kind of want it to be over here so I'm just going to do a decrease to start. <coughs> and we're going to do four single crochet decrease three times. So basically you're just going to do it all the way around until you can't do the sequence anymore. four stitches left which means I can't get my sequence in so I'm just going to put one single crochet in each of these four stitches and that leaves me with 20 so on this last stitch I'm just going to back out of this last stitch on the last stitch that we do we're going to change to white so go in and pull up a loop get my thing out of the way. You can make a slip knot here on your hook if it's easier for you. I like to tie these two in a knot. I leave my hook in there so I know that my tension is okay. And I cut these. The straggler and the black are now gone, which is <laughs> that's all I had left. I have more. It's just a different a different kind. It's a Bernat, not Red Heart. 
So we got more of this stuff. Actually, it has more sparkle in it, and it's from Bernat. So that's what the mittens are going to be made out of. Because I just ran out of all the stuff I had for my boot. So with white, we're going to do another decrease. But first, we're going to do 10 single crochets. This is 10 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want you to do this SC3 tog again. And then seven single crochets back to your marker. So that's just kind of your last decrease right at the very tippy top of the boot. And for the next four rows, whoops. So for the next four rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. We're going to change to red after. So on your last stitch, you're going to go to red, and with red, you're going to put one single crochet in each stitch for 14 rows. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my 14 rows. So that's my foot. That's the whole leg, foot and leg. So you can fasten off. I am not fastening off because it's my second leg. But um, make sure you fasten off. So if you have to just do a couple more stitches to make sure you fasten off, fasten off on the side, because we've got to tie these two legs together when we make them. So I'm not going to fasten off because this is my leg number two for the video so just make sure that they're stuffed the same and um, as you can see for this one I fastened off and made sure I was on the side so when I start to crochet them together I'm already over here to sew and then I'll just start from here Actually, I'm probably going to move my marker point because this will be where I do my color changes and I kind of want that to be at the back, so I'll probably be moving my marker point. It does not change the number of stitches that you have. We're just moving the marker point. Anyway, that's neither here nor there currently at the moment. So, um, do your second leg. I will put the pattern up on the screen and I'll meet you right back here. 
and we'll do the arms and then um, I'm gonna go over the fur faux that I used uh, I'm gonna show you the label and everything and then that'll probably be the end of chapter one and then in chapter two we'll kind of start building him together and doing all that so chapter one is usually pretty short because you have to make you know both arms and legs right so um, I'll put the pattern on the screen for the legs and I'll meet you right back here to start the arms So I'm back with my black. I don't have much, but I'm going to try to squeeze whatever I can into this mitten. We first need to build the thumb. PDF users, um, you'll find this pattern below where it says to sew the legs together and we start building the body. The arms are right below that. It starts with the thumb. So we're going to start with a magic ring. We're going to put six single crochets inside this ring. For the next five rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch. So, I know it's hard to see in black. So I would suggest using a marker. Personally, me, I just counted to 30. After my sixth stitch though, I made sure that my middle was closed. popped it around and then I just continue to count So that's my 30 stitches. So I just take my straggler from my magic ring and poke him right down in there. I did put stuffing in this. So um, it takes a really, really little bit of stuffing. But without the stuffing, I found it just kept collapsing. It was difficult to sew it to the thumb. So I just put as little as possible. But it's also nice because it's easier for it to keep its shape, right? So, just a tiny wee little bit of stuffing. And then I fastened off. So you just need a little sewing tail to sew it two stitches worth to the thumb, or to the hand after we make it. So that's your little thumb. I don't think I have enough for the hand, so to get into my Bernat, which has a center pole, which is great. The only problem is this feels a little bit 
thicker and it's got way more gold flecks in it. Like I actually like this stuff better than the Red Heart. So I'm glad I got it. Bought this at Walmart. So, so to start the hand, we're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets. My two mitts aren't going to match on my Santa Claus because <laughs> I already did the one hand in the Red Heart sparkle, but that's okay. So your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch, so I am going to use a marker for the hand. So this leaves 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, bringing you up to 18 stitches. So that's one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So you should have 18 stitches for the next five rows. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my five rows all done. So we're going to sew our thumb on now. I only used two stitches to do that. So starting in the stitch right next to your stitch marker. And then I go through my loop to make a knot. So your next round is going to be a decrease round. You're going to do two single crochet decrease as many times as you can. I managed five times around and I had three extra stitches which left me 18 stitches. So that's stitch number one. Stip stitch number two is in the sew spot. And then I use my sew spot and my next stitch is so hard to see to do my decrease. It just leaves no holes at all. My next decrease is again a stitch and a sew spot. And then I don't use the sew spot here because it's too awkward. I just start building again in normal stitches. So 
So I can't do another sequence because I only have three stitches left, but I have 15 stitches. So plus these three give me 18 stitches. And that's how I did my, my first round after I sewed. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease, and you're only going to be able to do this three times, and you're going to have three extra stitches. And this will leave you with 15 stitches. That's number one. And now you actually have stitches just to go into. That's three single crochets and a decrease. I repeat. It's 12. I have three stitches left, which gives me 15. Because I can't do my sequence, it won't fit. So that leaves me 15 stitches. We're going to change to white here on our last stitch. I just want you to stuff this a little bit. Don't worry about stuffing any. We stuffed the thumb already. Don't worry about stuffing this part because we don't want the thumb to stick out like that. And if you stuff that part, it will. We want the thumb to just be normal. So I don't think my hands are going to be the same size. I actually thought this was thicker yarn, but it actually might be not as thick. My hands might be two different sizes. But I still am going to say I like the Burnout better than the Red Heart. It's soft. So I'm just going to overstuff my hand trying to make it the same size because <laughs> my Santa's going to look pretty silly. So we're going to change to white. So on this last stitch, you can kind of pull that last stitch out. Find my ball of white here. So I'm going to go into the last stitch, pull up a loop, and then finish it with my white. And you guessed it, I'm going to tie the black and the white together. Please make sure your hook stays in there if you're doing the same thing. And for the next four rows, I'm going to get you to put one single crochet in each stitch. So we're only doing four rows for the cuff even though we did five rows for the foot. We're only doing four rows for the cuff because when I did five it looked really stupid for some reason. Because the arms are shorter I suppose but so I only chose to do four rows. So, do your four rows. You should have 15 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my last stitch of the white. So I've just pulled up a loop. I'm going to finish that stitch with my red. Cut off my white. And then with red, you're going to do 14 rows of one single crochet in each stitch. It should still have 15 stitches. And I will see you on the other side.
So that's my 14 rows. You can fasten off. You only need a sewing tail to sew it to your body. And that's for both arms. So I like to pull my piece through to the other side. Just makes that look better. But not that it'll be highly noticeable. Um, I'm still attached to my cake, but I just used the outside to make the arm. So I just got to roll what I pulled out. Those cakes are great. You can use two different sides. So I spin all mine into cakes. I don't, I don't buy it like this. It comes in a ball. So anyway, that'll be the end of chapter one. So my, I even overstuffed my mitt and it's still a little bit smaller than my red heart, but I do like the Bernat better because it has more of, of that gold flex in it. So I certainly do prefer that. So your, um, your sew spots are going to have to be on this side. So I've got this on the side for the body. I didn't do it for this one that I just made, but I got this one on the side because your thumbs have to stick out from the body, right? So when I fastened off, I made sure that I was over to the side. But I didn't do it for this guy. He seems to be over on the side. He just seems to be on the wrong side because if this is going to be on this side of the body, this has to be over here. So um, I'm actually gonna, just going to pull mine out. And I may just back out or add stitches. I think I'll just back out of some stitches just to make it on this side of the body. So when I do my, sorry, that's my dog. When I do my, um, ooh, when I sew it, I've got that and that. So it's going to be all the same. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, my pattern for my arm will go up, and then I will see you in Chapter 2. Hi guys, welcome back to chapter two. So this is where we're going to start to, we're gonna sew our legs together. So we're just gonna jump right into this. So I'm still attached. Hopefully you're still attached. You can sew your legs together any way you want to. I only used three stitches. not to get my fiber fill in there. So 
So, like I said before, I'm going to move my marker spot because I'm going to be changing color at some point and I don't really want to um, be at the front of something. I would like to be at the back of something. So this doesn't change how many stitches I have whatsoever, but this is going to be my first stitch. We're going to do two single crochet increase all the way around. I used my sew spots as stitches just so that there's no spaces. So that's number one. That's number two. And then my increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So I have 44 stitches. I had 44 stitches on my first stall. So I used the sew spaces. I did not use the sew spaces in the front. I just used these sew spaces. And I have 44 stitches. For the next eight rows, I'm going to put one single crochet in each of these 44 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my eight rows. This is what you should have. Um, I'm changing to, to black. So on my last stitch, I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to go to my black. My time I read with my straggler. I'm going back to red, but we got about four rows before that, and I don't want to just pull the red up from way down here because you will actually notice that. Your next round is just going to be in the back loops. It's going to be one single crochet in each of these back loops. The reason for the back loops is because this, let me zoom out a bit, um, this is how we built this, is we attach to the front loops that are going to be exposed to build this part. So this is where we are. So we have to do it in the back loops just so we can build for the front loops. So the back loops are easy peasy because they're just kind of right there. You should still have 44 stitches. So I am all the way back around and uh, your next round, we're going to start decreasing. So your next round is going to be a six single crochet decrease. You're not going to be able to get it all the way around though. You're going to have probably extra stitches and I just want you to put one single crochet in there. So that's number one. Number two. 
that is six single crochets and then my decrease will be in the front loop so front loop yarn go around to the next front loop yarn over pull through finish the stitch that's an invisible decrease and repeat So I've gone around five times. I have four extra stitches, and this will give me 39 stitches altogether. So when you decrease the next row, it's going to be the same thing. You're only going to make it around five times, and you're going to have four extra stitches. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease, and this will give you 34 stitches. That's five single crochets, and then your decrease. And repeat. So, I'm changed back to red. Um, we can start stuffing this because now that we're back to red for the next seven rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each of those 34 stitches so make sure you're getting in this part of the leg really well so all these front loops this is what we're going to get into later to finish building his coat, his Santa coat. So for the next seven rows, one single crochet in each of the 34 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So this is my seven rows. I haven't stuffed it. I've got a little bit of stuffing in there, but I haven't really stuffed it much. Um, so your next row, we're gonna keep, we're gonna decrease again, and then we're gonna sew the arms on. So a couple more rows, we're gonna sew the arms on. So I'm gonna need you to stuff this, but in the meantime, I want you to do a three single crochet decrease. You're gonna be able to do it six times around and then you're gonna have four extra stitches just like we've been doing the four extra stitches throughout. So that's number one with your marker. That's three single crochets and then I'm still doing my invisible decreases and repeat. So I'm all the way around and I have four stitches left, which will give me 28 stitches. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of those 28 stitches. And then I want you to stuff because we're going to sew the arms on after this. So, this is where we sew the arms on. So because my guy is over here right on the side where I need to sew an arm, I need to move him again. So if you're the same spot as me, which is fine because I wanna, I'm going to be doing another color change for his face, so I need to be back here again, which is where I started. But because we work in a spiral, um, it 
tends to move. So again, this does not change your stitch count. Your stitch count will still be the same. So I'm just going to make this my number one stitch and I already put my marker in it. So we need to stuff this first. So just remember, we did come in a bit, so don't try to overstuff it. So your thumbs have to be out, facing out. So just make sure you're getting these for the right, I think, I think I got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of tail there. So, um, I used four stitches when I sewed my arms on. So you just need to kind of figure out where they need to be. As long as my thumbs are all going in the right direction, <laughs> I'm okay with whatever happens. So, so we're going to start decreasing because we need to start making his head. So we're going to do a three single crochet decrease. We're going to count down from there. I've already got my one stitch because I already moved my marker. So that's two and three. And then your decrease. Mine is still going to be invisible. This will also bring the shoulders up too. And continue. So I'm at my arm and I'm going to use a sew spot and I got to do a decrease. So I'm just doing a regular decrease because I'm using the sew spots to do it. So I'm on my last decrease and I have 40 stitches. You should be able to go all the way around evenly and get 40 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 30 stitches. So we're going to decrease by 10. That's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease, and repeat. So your last round of decreases is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. That's one single crochet and then your decrease. So bring it down to 20 stitches. So you should have 20 stitches. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet 
in each of these 20 stitches and then we're going to change to our skin color. My skin color is peach. So this is my last stitch. I'm going to go to my skin color, so I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to switch to peach. So I need you to stuff this. So do your first stitch. Get your marker in there. And um, we need to stuff the shoulders and stuff this really well because um, we um, are going to start building the head. So I need you to make sure that this part of the shoulders are stuffed good. But not too much. And try not to do too much underneath the underarm here because then it'll make your arms stick out. I think that's good enough for me. It's not like we're closing anything off. Your next rose is going to be squishy, actually. It's going to be two single crochets in each stitch around to start making the head. So I've, we've already done our first stitch, if you kind of did it along with me, we've already done our first stitch. So we had 20 stitches, we're going to have 40 when we're done. So I'm going to put a second stitch in that same space and I'm going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. So now that I'm at 40 stitches for the next 10 rows, I want you to put one single crochet as big as we're making the hat. So one single crochet in each of those 40 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So this is what you should have. We're going to start closing the head up. But first I want to put the eyes in. So I have these 16 millimeter eyes. I've got these on Amazon. The reason I chose such big eyes is because I am putting a beard and everything on and it kind of takes away from his face so I chose the big eyes and by the time you get the beard and everything on and the nose the eyes don't look so big so um, make sure you're at the front and I put my eyes in the second row down from the top so I like to line it up with the leg So between the second and third row. And I did six visible stitches in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, two, three, four, five, six. So that pretty much lines up with that leg. So you can put your backs on. We're going to close this head up and then that will be the end of chapter 2. And then we'll meet back in chapter 3. So we're going to need to start stuffing this but we don't need to do it right away. 
we're going to decrease. We're going to do three single crochet decrease. So bring it down to 32 stitches. And then we're going to follow it up with one single crochet in each stitch. So that's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. So you're going to repeat that all the way around and then you're going to do a row of one single crochet in each stitch. Just make sure you're following my screen prompts and I will see you on the other side. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you up to 24 stitches, or down to 24 stitches. And I want you to do the same thing, follow it up with a one single crochet in each stitch row. And the reason for that, let me explain. Right now we have room for eyebrows. We need to still make room for a hat. So his head kind of needs to be elongated. That's number one. That's number two, and then your decrease. So repeat this all the way around, follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 24 stitches that you're going to have, and I will see you on the other side. So before our last decrease and our second to last row, we need to stuff this. You're never going to see this. It doesn't matter how fat you make this to make his head not wobbly because his beard comes down to about here. Well, I mean, you can make his beard as long as you want, but it's, he's going to have a beard, so no one's going to see this part. So, just make sure his head is round. <laughs> so, your last decrease is going to be one single crochet decrease. And this brings you down to 16 stitches, and then you're going to follow it up with one single crochet in each stitch. So that's one single crochet. So you jump right into your decrease. And repeat. So once you have it stuffed the way you want it, you're going to go in the front loop and out the next front loop. Sorry, I'm in an awkward position. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to go in the front loop. Sorry. I'm trying. I'm really reaching. <laughs> and out the front loop. So you're going to do that all the way around. Oops. So, once you're satisfied, you can pull. So I like to, sorry I can't see, I can only see what I'm doing on camera. So I like to pop across my hole, go through the loop, 
and pull. And I like to do it in both directions. And, sorry, when they get to be this tall, it's difficult for me to show you when I, he's so high, I mean, I literally couldn't even see what I was doing. I had to use the viewfinder. So I would go back and forth to tighten that knot right down. And then you can just weave in and out, back and forth. And that is it for the head. And that is it for chapter two. So his head looks funny right now and it looks really big. But keep in mind, we needed room for the beard and still the nose and the eyebrows and the hat. So there's actually not a whole lot of room. So I'm going to go over this fur. So when we come back in chapter three, if you're using the fur like me, so this is how thick it is or wide it is um, I've cut it for my mustache which I'll probably just cut it straight across for my mustache um, but this is the fur and it's super easy to cut and form so for the mustache I just took a piece of white yarn and I tied it in the middle and then I just kind of shaped it that's what I did for the mustache. So this is the fur that I used to make the beard. Well, I'll do all this in the next chapter. I already showed this once, but I'll show it again. So this is celebrated faux fur ribbon. That's the size and you can get it at Michael's. That's where I got mine from. I don't know if you can buy it at Joann's or anywhere else, but that's the size anyway that you're going to need for the for the width. And you can get all different sizes of the faux fur ribbons, but that's what it falls under is faux fur ribbon. So that's what you'll need for when we come back. We're going to do um we're going to do a lot when we come back. We're probably going to finish it. I can't really see this guy going into a fourth chapter. Chapter th 3 will probably be the end of Santa Claus and then we we make Mrs. Claus after so that'll be fun as well. So I will see you in chapter three. Hi guys welcome back to chapter three. So before we do all of this and make him actually look like Santa Claus I want to build finish building his coat so he needs to be upside down and then you, you need to start where you, you do your where you got your jog where you usually do a color change mine's just kind of on the side so we are going to make a slip knot and using the front loops so right here, where I showed you before, when we did all the back loops before we started our color change for the belt, we did back loops, so we left all these front loops exposed. And those are the ones that we're going to get into. So I just want you to reattach, put a single crochet in there, pull your slip knot nice and closed. We're going to go back into the same stitch. So I just want you to do one single crochet in each stitch around. At the time we were doing 44 stitches, so that's how many stitches you should have, is 44. So one single crochet in each stitch around in the front loops. So I'm all the way back round and you've got a space here where there's no stitch and you're on a bit of a jog. I just like to grab a little bit 
You don't have to go deep or anything. Grab a post and make kind of like a diagonal stitch just to fill in that spot. We're not slip stitching or anything, but we're starting in our next stitch. This is going to be our first stitch. I'm going to put a stitch marker in there. Just make sure you pull it nice and tight so it comes together nicely. We're going to do a four single crochet increase. So that's number one with my marker. That's four single crochets and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. You're going to repeat that all the way around. You're going to end up with 54 stitches. So, you should have 54 stitches. For the next six rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 54 stitches. And then we're going to change to white. So I will see you on the other side. So, that is my six rows. Um, I'm going to change to white, so I'm going to go into my last stitch, pull up a loop, and I'm going to finish that stitch with my white. I'm going to tie my red to my white straggler. Get my marker out of the way. So I can cut my straggler and my red off. I will not be needing that, and with my white, I'm going to do four rows of white. So I'm not increasing, I'm not decreasing. I'm just going to do four rows with my white. And I will see you on the other side. So that's the end of my four rows. I can fasten off. So you just need a weaving tail. I wouldn't think that you would have to really weave that far because Nothing's really going to happen to your... So that's his jacket. So to do his little um, belt, move my fur. I use this color. It's I know it looks really super yellow on here, but it's not. It's actually, it's called saffron kind of a goldy yellow. So I just took a piece of my scissors. So, um, let's get his face done and then we can do his hat while everything's drying because all this fur we glue on. So, let's get that done next. Alright, so for the nose, we're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round, this is an amigurumi, so no slip stitching or chaining. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. 
so after the first stitch, that's when your marker goes in. Then stitch number two you can go into that same space and all the way around. You'll have 12 stitches when you're done because you're basically doubling everything. Your next round is going to be three single crochets. Oh gosh. And an increase. My dog just went tearing across my house. That's number one, two, and three single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring it up to 15 stitches. So you can flip this around. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. And now we're going to decrease. <laughs> it's just a small little nose. So we're going to do three single crochet decrease because we that's what we did in an increase so we're gonna keep it the same that's three single crochets and I'm gonna do front loops because it looks better Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, and this will take you down to nine stitches. And that is it for his nose. So we're going to cinch it shut. So you can fasten off. You're going to need a sewing tail. Pull your, um, your thing to the inside. And put some stuffing in there. So once you're satisfied with your stuffing, you're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop, just like that. The reason I have you pull it through is you don't get that bobble there. Oh. So I'm all the way back around, so you just pull it shut, and then I pop across the hole, and go through the loop to make a knot, and then I go the other way as well, and that's just a preference I have, you don't necessarily have to, and I wiggle mine closed because it just seems to close it really tight. So. Um, I put the nose pretty close to the, because I needed room for the beard and mustache. So his nose is really high. Like, this is my other guy. His nose is literally, <laughs> like, right at the top line there. Like, it's high. But again, it's not something that you notice. Um at all so and 
I'm just going to do a bit of a simplified mattress stitch around. His nose looks big right now, but um, when you get the beard and everything on, it doesn't look like that. It'll look like a normal size nose. So I know he still looks really funny. I know. We gotta trust the process. I wouldn't bring you this far if he didn't turn out like the, the picture. Okay, so let's start doing our stuff. I'm gonna remove my mat because my hair, the fur, the faux fur, will stick to my mat and it'll be really hard to get off. So, we're gonna take some fur and our big scissors. So I've already showed you the label. I'm not gonna go through that again. But you just need to kind of determine how big you want it, how far do you want to go over, and then just cut. This all gets trimmed up after anyway. So, just cut a piece of fur off. And then you can just start to pin it down. Find all my pins for God's sakes. So I pinned them in place where I wanted the fur to be which is pretty close to the eyes for me. And then I went about just trimming. And then I just went about trimming. So you're gonna get fur all over his red coat, but may have to trim a couple of times, but you can make it as long or as short as you want it to be. So it's not the cleanest stuff to work with, but Get the idea. So once you're done, that's when we glue. And you can still trim after you glue, obviously. You're not gonna get it perfect, perfect. Just trying to get mine round. It is the messiest stuff to deal with. So I'll worry about mine later. You should use this for glue. Fabric glue does not help it stick. Hot glue would probably be good, uh, but it's not necessary. So since I already have him pinned, I just take out between the pins and I'm only doing this top part. I don't glue all the way down his face. I 
they don't glue down here. So. I just glue the edge. So that's going to need to dry overnight. <sighs> but after I put my stash on, I'll be able to remove the um, things there. So we cut our piece the other day in chapter two. So we just need to gather it. We need to get a piece of white. Now we're gonna we're gonna tie with this. So you need it decently long. So we pinch this. I'm gonna put it upside down so my ties are at the back. So, I guess we don't really pinch it. It's supposed to be pinched. Pinched. <laughs> so, if you can manage to pinch it with one hand. Make sure it's super tight. Do a double knot. Um, you shouldn't see this because of the fur. And then you just take your, I'm going to make a mess here, and you just shape your stash. You can use smaller scissors for this. And then you just shape how you want your mustache to look. So I'm going to take this pin out, I go down, and I'm going to pop out wherever I pop out. that end. Same thing with this end. I'm going to go down, but I'm going to try not to go down in the same spot, but I'm going to pop out. Preferably pop out the same spot up here. So... It's hard to see, but that's mustache. <laughs> So this gets tied, make sure you're pulling it nice and tight, in a tight double knot. We're going to cut that off, leaving some nubbies, and you're going to poke it down. Now you can put a daub of glue under there if you don't feel comfortable just leaving it like that. And that's our Santa face. Well, sort of. We still got to do eyebrows. I have fur everywhere. <laughs> I have to get my can of air out just to clean it up. So, as far as your little eyebrows go. So, I just cut a little piece. Make it kind of straight across. And I've done two Santas with this roll. So this roll, and I still have some on the roll. Like, I got quite a bit, actually. Oh, there we go. I've got that much left on the roll. And I've done two Santas. So. And then you just take this little piece and you make your eyebrows. However. 
long and shaped that you want to do. And I put them really close to the eye because I wanted to um, I wanted to keep room for my hat. So I put it literally on top of the eye. And you're going to want to pin that to place too. So Oh, messy, messy, but you're going to have the best looking Santa around. So we'll let our little Santa dry and then we will make the hat while he's drying. He's going to have to dry overnight, but we'll get the hat done. All right, so moving on to um, the hat, I'm going to put, I got fur everywhere, up my nose and everything else. So moving on to the hat, uh, we're going to start with white because we're making, let me reach, we're making this rim around it. Now to get it puffy like that, I made it extra long and then I folded it up. So you'll see, you'll see what I do. We are going to start with a 4.5, but we are going to finish the hat with a 5.5. The reason being is the red heart that I'm using is, a, it's stiff. So to get it to be a little more of a flowy kind of a hat, I had to resort to a bigger hook. So that's the only reason we're doing that. So come back down here. We start with white, and we're going to start, if I can find the beginning, with a slip knot, and you're going to chain 40. So that's my chain of 40. So you're going to slip stitch to join. So we have our ring. We're not, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to build this enamel Grammy. So you don't need to do a chain one here, but all you need to do is just start in the next stitch. But you can chain one if you're comfortable doing that. It's just a hat for a doll, so I didn't think it was too super duper important. And you can also probably put in a stitch marker if you wanted to on the first stitch that you started with. But again, it's not important. You've got this tail down here. Anyway, you're gonna put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So this is what you should have, the start of your hat. For the next seven rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 40 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my seven rows. I'm on my last stitch and I'm going to go to red. So 
This is where things get weird. But I really wanted a certain look for this hat. And Puffy was one of them, so. What I did was take out your stitch marker. We're gonna fold this in half. So let's protect our loop. So what I want you to do is to fold this in half. <laughs> so bring the bottom up because we've got our straggler here we can deal with. So we bring the bottom up to the top on the inside like that. And here we're going to switch hooks. So now I want you to go to your 5.5. We're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So your little tail from where you started, you can just tuck into that fold. What we're going to do, tuck everything down, all the way around is we're going to go in both sets of stitches. Oops. Let me get into the stitch. So into that stitch and then into this stitch. And we're going to do our one single crochet. So this is probably a little slow going when you first start because this is where we started. So you kind of got that weird spot. And the stitches are backwards so just so we don't miss one it's just easier if you take your time and you go through one each one. Or if you can manage to hold it properly you can Managed to go through two at the same time, but that is what we're going to do all the way around. Try to keep your stitches loosey goosey. So you should still have 40 stitches and this is what you should have. So that's the inside around and then this is the outside. So Nice and puffy. So the next row is going to be the same, one single crochet, but now you have, I mean you had stitches to follow before, but you know what I mean. So one single crochet in each of these 40 stitches for another row and then when we come back we're going to start to decrease. If you are a tight crocheter, maybe go up in size. You just want your hat to be able to be flowy, not, not tight and stiff. So your next round is going to be eight single crochets and a decrease. And every, every row that we do, we're going to follow it up with one single crochet in each stitch. So I want you to pay attention to my pause screens. They will have both rows on there because I'm probably not going to add them to the video. Just know that every decrease row we do will be followed up by one single crochet in each stitch. This round is going to be eight single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's eight single crochets and then the decrease I'm using is just in the front loops so that they're invisible. 
So this, so complete this all the way around and then your next round will be one single crochet in each stitch and then I'll meet you back here. So your next round is going to be seven single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 32 stitches and then you can follow it up with one single crochet in each stitch around. That's number one. That's seven single crochets and then your decrease and repeat. So that's what you should have so far. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 28 stitches and then you can follow it up with one single crochet in each. That's number one. six six single crochets and then your decrease I was getting ahead of myself I repeat your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 24 stitches. And you can do one single crochet in each of those 24 stitches after. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. This one's going to be a little bit different. So for now, I just want you to do the decrease. I don't want you to follow it up with any rows. So that's number one. That's four single crochets and then your decrease. So this will bring you down to 20 stitches and repeat. So you should have 20 stitches. For the next 12 rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 20 stitches and then we'll get back to decreasing. So 12 rows, 20 stitches, I will see you on the other side. So this is what your hat should look like at this point. We're going to keep decreasing. We're going to do a three single crochet decrease and then you're going to follow it up with one single crochet in each stitch. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. Mine are still invisible. This will give you 16 stitches. So follow this up with one single crochet in each of those 16 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So 
your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. You're going to follow that up with one single crochet in each stitch as well. That's number one, that's number two, and then your decrease. So repeat this, and this uh, should give you 10, 14 stitches. 14 stitches, and then you can follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 14 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. The last round is just going to be a decrease. We're not following it up with any other row. It's just going to be one single crochet decrease, leaving you with 10 stitches um, to uh, cinch closed. And then we put a pom pom on the end of this. So you can fasten off I just need a cinching tail. So in the front loop, out the front loop. all the way around. It's only a few stitches, so do the same thing. It's it's weird doing it when there's nothing no stuffing in here. So just pop across and make your knots. If you're like me, you'll probably do two of them. And then we can just weave this down Let's weave that down inside the hat. We'll deal with that after we make the pom-pom. So this is what you should have. I know it's really funny looking now, but it won't be when it's on his head. It will look different. So let's get some white or get a pom-pom if you have a real pom-pom. So you can buy these faux fur pom-poms. Um, you probably can get them in white. And they all have, I'm trying to find it here. They all attach with this little piece that you would put yarn through. So this little thing here, you would put a piece of yarn through it, put it on your hat, tie the yarn on the inside of the hat. This does not match the color of my hat or any of the fur that I've used. It's it's more of an off-white compared to the fur that I used. So I'm going to make my own pom-pom. But you can get these. I bought a bunch of these off Amazon. I'm sure you can get white. Um, I didn't, but I'm pretty sure you can get pure white. So you can do that. It's an option. And it's probably a very adorable option since we use the fur everywhere else. However, I'm going to make my own pom-pom. So first, let's start off with a piece of string, because <laughs> we're going to need it. And then, if you have pom-pom makers, which I do, make one of mine, I have these, all in different sizes for pom-pom makers, but I actually think it's faster and easier to do it with your fingers. So We're going to spread our four fingers out, and we're just going to wrap. Now, you want the pom-pom to be f a decent size pom-pom. And then the more you cut it, the more fuzzier it gets. So start off big and then cut it small. It'll be nice and fuzzy. All right, so I just kept wrapping until I had about that much and you can't feel your hand anymore. So I'll just take your hand out, cut your thing off. So you're gonna lay it down and you're going to take your string, and preferably in the middle, you're going to tie 
a double knot. It's tight as you can. And then I usually come around to this side, tie another double knot as tight as I can. So I'm not, I'm going to hold on to my pieces that I just did and I cut all your loops. Now I got all these loops on both ends and you're going to cut them. the other side so once your pom-pom is huge I'm just gonna get a bag for my mess Making sure all your loops are cut. Holding on to your strings because you don't want to cut those. You need to use those for tying. And now you're just going to trim. So the shorter you go, the fuzzier it gets. All right, this is my pom-pom. I could go smaller, but it's fine. So you're gonna need to turn your hat kind of sort of inside out. Get a needle, thread one end. Make sure you're going down the center of your hat. So this is always a good indication that this is the center, top, center of your hat. So I'm going to pull one of my white pieces through. And then I'm going to come out a different spot with my other one, but preferably close because on the other side it needs to, needs to look good. So I'm going to come out here with my other one. So I just want to make sure that I'm all the way up. So even though it's inside out, I've pulled my thing all the way up and I'm going to tie a tight triple knot. I'm going to add it to the red. I'm going to tie some more knots. This is just a doll. So cut it off and leave some nubbies and then you can turn it back right side in. That's your pom pom. So he's still kind of drying, but this hat should fit nice and snug. So you should have to force it onto his head, which means no sewing. It's hard to do on camera because I have to hold him so far away from me. So because I use the bigger hook, that's the floppy that you get with the hat. So you can flop it in any direction that you want, but that's the floppy you get with the hat. So the hat fits nice and snugly. Um, I didn't really want to sew it on because I thought that, that would look crappy. So I made it nice and snug around his head. And that's it. There's no more. So you just gotta keep letting your stuff dry and then take all your pins out when it's done so thanks for joining me guys I hope you enjoyed Mr. Claus St. Nicholas um, Mrs. Claus will be done in a separate video so thanks for joining me I'll see you in the next video